In a local village market in Vientiane province, not far from the capital of Laos, we found this. Illegal wildlife meat is sold in markets like this one all around the country. We took this footage to experts at the Wildlife Conservation Society. This, they say, is a sarau, a species of ungulate that is listed as near threatened on the IUCN red list. This is an oriental pied hornbill. While not quite as threatened as the sarau, this is still an extremely rare bird. The hunting and sale of both these animals is strictly prohibited under Lao law and carries a hefty sentence. But at this market, the meat was displayed blatantly. Our cameraman was asked if he was police. When he said no, they had no problem with him filming. With international borders opening up and skyrocketing demand for wildlife products from neighbours like China, the pressure on Laos' threatened species has never been greater. In one park in the north of Laos, a number of critical species are fighting for survival. The Nga Met Pului National Protected Area is one of the biggest in the country and home to some of its rarest animals. Yeah. Paul Eshu is an international ecotourism advisor with the Wildlife Conservation Society. He says the park is home to a small but crucial population of tigers. Yeah. Laos is the last place with what's, what's believed to be a breeding population. So if they're lost in Nga Met Pului, they're pretty much lost from the entire country. Paul has been instrumental in setting up an innovative new project to protect the animals that call Namet Palui home, using tourism to combat illegal hunting. It was to be the first of its kind in Laos. We've travelled to Huapan province in northern Laos to see WCS's new initiative firsthand. It's called the Nam Nguyen Night Safari. Groups of tourists are taken by boat up the Nam Nguyen River, located inside the protected area. For every animal they spot, an amount of money is deposited into a village development fund that makes payments to the villagers that border the forest. The more animals tourists see, the more money locals make. It's a direct incentive to keep animals alive. The vast majority of the guides on the Nam Nguyen Night Safari are former hunters. They've been retrained to use their old skills in animal spotting and tracking for a new, polar opposite purpose. Having lived around the forest all their lives, the guides are incredibly knowledgeable about the ecosystems here. Calm can identify the unique calls of hundreds of bird species that live in this forest and can spot them high in the sky from hundreds of meters away. Kam Vieng, on the other hand, teaches visitors about the medicinal properties of various native plants along the river. He knows which ones can be eaten and which are poisonous. There are many reasons local people hunt in Nga Met Pului. One of the biggest is the simple need for food. A lot of people get a lot of their uh, protein intake is coming from natural sources. So in many parts of the country there's as much as 50 or 60 or in some places as much as 90% of people's consumed protein comes from wild animals. Those participating in the ecotourism program are still allowed to hunt so long as they do so outside the protected zone using traditional hunting practices for personal consumption. But some of the hunters were at first unsure what the new rules might mean for their diets. <laughs> The guides have gradually moved towards eating less wild meat. 
Paul says hunting for food can be sustainable, provided it's carried out in accordance with the law. It's not necessarily bad so long as they are only hunting for their own consumption and if they're only hunting non-protected species. The issue comes with hunters going into the, into the deep into the core zone of the protected area hunting protected species to sell. There's another, more sinister force driving demand for big game mammals like tigers, elephants, bears and deer. Two of Laos' neighbours, China and Vietnam, have booming markets for traditional medicines made from illegal animal products. There's, uh, markets within China and within Vietnam that are quite interested in buying Lao wildlife products, um, especially large mammal parts that they use for traditional medicines or for other things. Um, and as I think there's been greater economic interconnectedness within the region that's also then exacerbated all of those pressures on wildlife. And what's curious about Laos is it's not only the hunting pressures affecting Laos, but Laos has served as a conduit for a lot of wild animal species and products that are coming through the country because it's a place where a lot of the borders are quite porous, uh, the regulatory mechanisms are, are weak in some areas, mm -hmm. so that wild animal products from Africa, for example, are being marketed to China via Laos because it's a way they can um, get through to the stronger borders in some other places. Programs like the Night Safari can only do so much to combat that multi-million dollar industry. Paul says education campaigns within China may be the key to curbing demand. In China, WCS, Wildlife Conservation Society, has a whole, their whole pro, a big program about um, combating that. So, for example, they've got some celebrities speak out against um, consumption of wildlife, like, uh, for example, Yao Ming, I think, they have a whole campaign. It's been quite successful. The Night Safari has already seen great success. The program's only been running for a few years so far, and already the average amount of animal sightings per boat trip has greatly increased. Oh, ที่ว่าบ่มีโครงการนี้มาอยู่นี่ประชาชนนี่เนาะก็แนวอะไรว่าแล้วมาล่าสัตว์น้ํากับมาล่าเอาสัตว์ป่ากับมาล่าเอาม